I got to go back. I got one more clip from this podcast, yeah, Billy. I'm saving the best for last. Um, and, and, uh, and I really think you're, you're going to love this one. <laughs> Inspiring interviews with today's top landlords. This is the Rental Income Podcast. Asked if I could be flexible with their rent, that they'd lost their job. I, because I'm fair, but I'm also firm. I reminded them that, you know, the owners have a mortgage with this uh, property and it's not going to be forgiven. Uh, you're getting a stimulus check. Hopefully you've got some savings or money that you can borrow. You sent everyone out a gift basket, which I think is a great idea. What was in the gift basket? Started with a roll of toilet paper with a little sticker on it that said, I survived the toilet paper crisis of 2020. It had uh, some candy in it a journal, a, uh, about 15 um, thinking of you cards that they could send out to friends and relatives, uh, a pocket knife saying um, like a little uh, Swiss Army knife that said um, Corona 2020. We delivered 350 of them over the weekend, probably 25 texts or emails saying, oh my gosh, thank you. So you figure, you know, for every one person that responded positively, there were 10 that would have, but didn't. So it was overwhelmingly yeah. positive and it buys a little bit of goodwill. I'd rather spend $35 for a gift basket than have to give a $500 rent concession next month. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's remember, yeah. what, so what's, what's in the gift basket? Toilet paper. Okay, you've lost your job. You can't pay rent. Um, you get toilet paper, some uh-huh. candy, a journal, <laughs> I guess, to write down your thoughts, right. some thinking of you cards, and to yeah. top it off, a pocket knife with Corona 2020 written on it. So I'm, so I'm picturing, do you remember Unsolved Mysteries? <laughs> uh, you remember the yeah. show Unsolved Mysteries? Like, that was the most terrifying oh, no, program of my childhood, I think, <laughs> without a doubt. Um, if people haven't Still seen it, there. it's worth going to like, just look how these episodes would start and it'd have this scary man with a deep voice and he has these deep set eyes and they would have a, like a smoke machine behind him and it would be all <laughs> dark and scary. And then he would say, you know, in this situation would be something like Frank Skelback of Madison, Wisconsin was stabbed 832 times with a small <laughs> pocket knife. Yeah, the like odd, COVID-19. you know, the, yeah, the, the autopsy showed he had been forcefully fed four pounds of jelly beans. He was found in the dumpster of his own rental property, wrapped in toilet paper, like a mummy, with a journal on top which said, May 1st, I survived the toilet paper crisis, but not the gift basket. <laughs> Like, this is what yes. I was imagining. Uh, yes, they constructed their own, the tools for their own demise. Why yeah. the knife? I don't get it. Why the toilet paper? It's all like, it's kind of like these little trinkets, these little like tongue in cheek, like, oh, the, because it's a joke. It's what you said. It's a little bit, it's, they're just so a bit divorced from. I think from the, they genuinely the thought this was like a great idea. Like, I think, I, and, and no, the, I, that's I, what I'm saying. You know, when he said, he's like, out of the 350, 25 people wrote me back and said, oh my yeah. gosh, this is great. And then he yeah. says, which I assume for every one that did, there's 10 that, and I'm thinking, yeah, 10 that are like writing down in that <laughs> journal, like all the different ways they're thinking about, you know, oh killing God. you, or, you know what I mean? And yeah. I, it's just, but it just, this is the reset. Like there needs to be a reset. And that I feel like a debt jubilee is, is the way to do this reset because people are not seeing each other. This guy, has no empathy whatsoever. How could he possibly think that somebody in the middle of that situation would want to get a pocket knife right. with Corona 2020 to, written on it? Right. As opposed to a real gift, a real act of empathy and understanding and, uh, and support. Um, yeah. So it's a bit of a, it's a, it's a total bait and switch and a, like, look over here, look over here. I'm being nice. Um, totally. Bait and, switch. You know, and, he, and they talk about it. I, you know, I'd much rather give out a $35 uh, gift basket than a, yeah. than a $500 rent discount, you know? Yeah. Like, they say if- it clearly, yo. Yo, thanks, to get, like, thanks, for those, thanks for listening to those podcasts on our behalf. That's a technique from, from, from way back. Sometimes you watch these, like, listen to, to what people are saying to themselves, like the, the targeted things that are for certain groups, and you go, 
wow, that's how they that's how they speak when when no one's around, no one's listening, mm. and or at and, least no one no one they think that would uh, would disagree with the underlying you know underlying premises. So so to, if you Ren strike would be like an instrument or you know, to get organized and let's say this is the class of people that that you're kind of like push you would be pushing the financial burden onto them right by saying I'm not paying my rent. These guys have mortgages and now they have to figure out how to deal with it. So then they, they are organized. Like there's no landlord social mm-hmm. movement. Like they don't march in the streets, right? Like they have organizations and associations which have the numbers of the mayor or whoever uh, to talk about property taxes. They know they deal directly with banks and, and figuring out that renegotiating their mortgages, all these things. And so they would pass it up another level. So who's up above them? And the, banks. and the banks and the big money, the big money, the ones who are, are getting these, these trillions of dollars that are going out into the economy right now. 